past ages viewed the world as a complete entity, a macrocosmos. It perfectly mirrored all other cosmoses, great or small, including the microcosmos, human being. As above, so below, and as within, so without, observed the Egyptian sage Hermes Trismegistus, implying that one could learn from one cosmos about all others. Some principles were easier to observe on a larger scale, others in miniature. So the ancients taught about the world and the human being together, frequently using myth to convey truths about both. One such myth tells of a great flood that wipes the world clean of inhabitants. Noah and his family are the sole survivors. When the waters abate, his three sons and their wives migrate in different directions to repopulate the world into three continents, Europe, Africa, and Asia. The inhabitants of these continents develop differently through the following centuries, excelling in different areas, forming different cultures, and becoming different races. This myth is historically doubtful, but esoterically potent. It implies that a complete cosmos is three-part, the diversity and tension between each part lending life to the whole. The microcosmos human being is likewise made of three brains, mind, body, and heart. Each is sensitive to different things, values different things, and is attracted to or repelled by different things. The challenge of harmonizing these three brains is tantamount to the challenge of achieving world peace, except that world peace is not in the hands of an individual, while self-mastery is. A later myth tells of three wise men, each a ruler from a different continent, coming to adore a newborn king. This myth, also of doubtful historical significance, is again esoterically potent. The human being is incomplete. To become complete, to fulfill his potential as cosmos, he must harmonize between his three brains by developing a conscious governing element, a newborn king, a master.